Microscopes are scientific tools that use lenses to magnify and increase the resolution of an image. To magnify something means to make it appear bigger, and resolution is the degree of detail within an image. It is the ability of the microscope to distinguish between two points that are close together. Magnification can be high or low. A high magnification means that an image is many times bigger than the actual size of the specimen, maybe thousands or millions of times bigger, whereas a low magnification means that the image is only several times bigger, maybe tens or hundreds of times bigger than the original specimen. So at school, the microscopes that you are provided with can likely magnify something to between 400 or 600 times to give you some perspective. And the magnification power is given as a number followed by an X. This is the number of times the image is made bigger. For example, 40 times, 200 times, or 600 times. If the resolution of an image is high, the image is clearer and more detailed. On the other hand, if it is low, the image is less clear and less detailed. Resolution is usually given in micro, nano, or picometers, and it is the distance between two points that can be resolved by the microscope. So let's take a very brief look at the history of microscopy. The first light microscopes were invented in the 1590s, and at this time William Shakespeare was writing plays, Queen Elizabeth I was on the throne, and the plague was claiming many, many lives. Now these microscopes use light as an illuminating source, and they also use glass lenses. Much later, in the 1930s, when Britain was heading towards another world war, Tolkien had just published The Hobbit and Penguin Books had just come on the scene, the electron microscope was invented and it revolutionised research. These microscopes harnessed the power of electrons and electromagnetic lenses. Now you need to have an understanding of size and scale when it comes to microscopes, so let's go through some measurements first and then see where the human eye, light and electron microscopes relate to this scale. So we're all familiar with what a metre is, and I'd have drawn one on the screen, but as you can appreciate, it won't fit. And we are all familiar with what a centimetre is, which is one hundredth of a metre. Now the human eye can easily distinguish between, or resolve, its two end points. So there's one end point here, and we can easily see the other end point here. And likewise with one millimetre, which is one thousandth of a metre. This is still easily visible by the human eye, and again we can distinguish between the two endpoints. However, when we try view a micrometer, which is one millionth of a metre, the human eye cannot distinguish between or resolve its two endpoints, and therefore we cannot see it without the aid of a microscope. Likewise for anything smaller, like a nanometer, which is one billionth of a metre, or a picometer, which is one trillionth of a metre, we would need an awful lot of help to see something that small. Now the human eye can see things that are approximately 50 to 100 micrometers in length or larger, and you might be able to see a large cell if you look very, very closely. However, the best light microscopes have the ability to distinguish between two points that are only 200 nanometers apart, and magnify an image up to 2,000 times. They also allow us to see large organelles like nuclei. Unbelievably though, the very best electron microscopes can now distinguish between two points that are 50 picometers apart and can magnify an image up to 10 million times. Electron microscopes also allow us to see inside organelles and even visualize small subcellular structures such as ribosomes, plasmid DNA and pathogens such as viruses. Now this is absolutely mind-blowing and you can imagine what the power of these microscopes has done for our understanding of the inner workings of not only a cell, but organelles within the cell, and tiny pathogens such as viruses. So electron microscopes, although they are amazing, <laughs> do have some drawbacks, and you need to be aware of the advantages and disadvantages of both a light and an electron microscope. So light microscopes can be used to study living cells or organisms, However, electron microscopes can only view dead specimens due to the high pressure and vacuum needed to view the sample. The light microscope is cheap and portable, it is easily moved from one lab to another, whereas the electron microscope is very expensive, it's absolutely huge and takes a great deal of effort to move. 
Now, the overriding advantage of an electron microscope, though, is its amazing ability to produce high magnification and high resolution images. The magnification and resolution of a light microscope is much lower in comparison. And you might get asked how advances in microscope technology have changed the field of biology or medicine. And the answer to this question is that the electron microscope has allowed scientists to study smaller specimens with more clarity and in greater detail. These advances have led to a better understanding of how cells and their organelles or subcellular structures work, leading to advances in research and our ability to treat many diseases. To finish up, let's just summarise the main differences between a light and an electron microscope. The light microscope passes light through a specimen, whereas the electron microscope passes electrons through the specimen. The light microscope can be used to study living cells or organisms, whereas the electron microscope requires that the cells or organisms are dead. The magnification power of a light microscope is lower than that of an electron microscope, and the resolution of a light microscope is lower than that of an electron microscope. And light microscopes can distinguish between large organelles, however an electron microscope can distinguish between points within organelles, and can also resolve much smaller structures such as ribosomes and plasmid DNA. If you would like some free GCSE revision notes that accompany this series of videos, please head over to my website www.drmeclever.com. You'll also find my revision guides here. And if you want to say hello and get updates on my latest work, scrollable revision notes and freebies, you can follow me on Instagram or other social media under the handle at drmeclever. And finally, if you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share. Thank you.